Hi everyone, welcome back. What's in my makeup bag? Spring 2024. I've got some really good new makeup finds to show you in this video. So let's go back to the start, take the makeup off and see what I did and what I used and how I used it. <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna try and stay on target on this video. I'm not gonna waffle. Let's go in with the makeup. I'm not using a primer. I don't use a primer. I, I feel like primers are one of those things that were being sold just to make us spend a bit more money. I'm just going to come out there and say that. I've never had a real problem with makeup sliding off my face. You know what, maybe if you do have a problem with makeup sliding off your face, then they're brilliant for you. Or, what I will say is, the ones that are pore perfecting, so they're the silicon ones that just slide over the pores and make your skin really smooth. Yes. You know what, if you want to use a primer, fine. Um, I'm just going to completely backtrack there. If I keep fiddling with my face, it's because I just cleared out my office and dusted it and I have got just a million bits of fluff stuck all over the place. And every time I move, they seem to be coming off my clothes and sticking in my eyelashes and it's a complete nightmare. So, that's why. Also, if you see me doing funny things with my mouth, it's because when I don't have my Invisalign in, I've got these attachments on the sides of my teeth and my cheeks catch on them when I talk. It's really annoying. So that's, if, I, if I'm not going like this, that's why. Now that we've got that admin out of the way, straight in with foundation. This is a Lancome Tonto Doll Ultra Wear, but the Care and Glow version, which I prefer to the original. I'm going to come out and say it. I'm going to come out and say that I think this is my number one foundation. Yeah, it is. It's my most used. Uh, I was going to show you this, the Kevin Aucoin. This is the Stripped Nude Skin Tint. However, it's a beautiful product. Shall I show you a little bit of it? But after I finish this video, I've got to film another one. And what I will say is that on camera, if I'm doing something in um, a place that needs extra lighting, it doesn't really have enough coverage. It doesn't hold up to things that well. But look how beautiful that is, just as a, a daytime tint. It's so gorgeous. I think it might be my second favorite foundation. It's not even a foundation. I don't know what you'd call it, tinted moisturizer, but it doesn't have any SPF in or anything like that. I quite like that because it means I can do my skincare routine, I can put my own sunscreen on, and then I can do my makeup. I'm not particularly bothered about um, sunscreen in skincare. Saying that, this has got SPF 25, the long con, but you'd need to put on a hell of a lot of foundation to get the stated SPF. So I always just think, consider it a bonus. Going in with this, which is slightly less coverage, has slightly less coverage, and is slightly more glowy than the original Tonto Doll. Still has the same long wear, but it's just not as, um, I'm sure I've told you about this foundation before and you're probably thinking, you're preaching to the converted here. Um, it's not ultra glowy, it's just not velvety like the original one. So look, it does have a lovely sheen. It's quite fresh looking. Now the thing about this is, as you can probably see, I only need a very, very sheer coating of this and I feel like that's it, I'm done. I don't particularly wear a lot of foundation anyway, but I like the fact this just evens everything out, look, and it leaves it fresh and glowing and it's taken seconds. Oh, look at this, this is a new discovery. This is actually a foundation in its own right. It's the Swede ah, Miracle Powder. Um, however, it's very, very sheeny shiny and I've been using it as a little setting powder for over the top of my foundation. If I'm filming or something and I feel like I want just a little bit of extra staying power. Can you see, is that showing up on camera? how shiny that is. I find it a little bit too much shine for all over the face, but just going around the edges there, look at that. No need for highlighter. I would avoid places where you have fine lines, or if you've got very enlarged pores, 
because it does obviously it's shiny so it'll highlight them but really nice that is medium light I have that in should I show you again what it looks like oh I've got quite a lot going on there haven't I that's what it looks like in the pot and it's quite unusual because if I take a little bit of the powder on my finger and massage it into the back of my hand it almost turns into a cream so it must have quite moisturising properties to that. Um, going off on a tangent already. Let's just take a little bit down onto the, the old chest area. Seeing that I've got a very low cut t-shirt on today. Woo! Right, let's finish off the skin. Um, Rare Beauty Bronzing Stick in Happy Sol. I think that this is such a good buy. It's not hugely expensive, but it is. it feels like a very luxurious makeup product. It's a bronzing stick. You can just draw it straight onto the skin so you get a really precise sort of application with it. And it gives a nice creamy finish. And can you see, instantly just sort of bronze and a little bit contoured it just gives I don't really go in for a lot of contouring but it does give a bit of extra shape to the face don't need any highlighter because I've got quite a glowy foundation on and I gave it a little bit of extra with that Swede powder um, so that's all good a little bargain treat for you the elf camo blush in peach perfect look at this so this is the lightest most Gorgeous, pretty little peach colour. And it's got a glossy, highlightery sort of finish. And I think it's really pretty. Can you see that there? I really like it. Seven quid. It's not like the other camo blushes that are dynamite, quite frankly. You need the tiniest amount and, and they just sort of go everywhere. Shall I show you? <laughs> Should I just completely mess up everything and, and show you? This one is just, it feels almost like a different product, really, to the rest of the shades. So if I show you Pinky Promise. And say that that is honestly the amount that you need. Look. The teeniest, teeniest amount has done the trick. I mean, I could probably put on less than that, really. That blends quite nicely into the peach, doesn't it? Anyway, I just like them because they're a really hydrating finish. They don't leave a dry, powdered finish. They sort of leave this gloss to the cheeks that I really, really like. So there you go. Top tip of the week or month. Um, right, what should we do next? I'm going to come in close and we're going to do eyes. Oh, I've got another bargain to show you got another bargain for you. I mentioned this on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, then do. It's at Ruth Quiddy. Um, if you're not on Instagram, then good for you, quite frankly. I showed shades 730, which looks like this. Watch. Which is a sort of, I don't know what you'd call it, minky, silvery sort of shade. But then I discovered a shade that I had bought <laughs> and forgotten about in one of my high street hauls, uh, Caramel 710, which is warmer still and I think might actually suit me better than the original one. Look at this. So this is more of a golden toned, it's just ever so slightly warmer. I think that's so pretty. Do you? Hopefully you're all saying yes. Yes, Ruth. Look at the screen now. Um, it's very easy to use. I just apply with fingertips. And very easy just to blend in. Look like that. But once it's on, it doesn't shift. So I think for the eight quid, seven or eight quid it costs, I actually think it's a really good buy. And then what I like to do is I like to take my Vive Eye Wand in coffee 
and I like to just give it a little flick from the corner of the eye upwards in a very, very clumsy little, oh God, how many times have we done this? Am I still going to be doing YouTube when I'm 80 and still drawing on my little corner wedge? So make it a little bit more chunky, like so. It's not very even, is it? And then, either with fingertip or with a brush, I just blend that in. You can absolutely do this with your fingertip. You don't need a brush. Like no brush, no brush makeup. Um, I'll show you, look. But I do find that the brush just is a bit quicker and blends it in a bit more seamlessly. Eyebrows, what do we have going on in here since I last talked about makeup on YouTube? We've got the Anastasia Brow Gel. Did I talk about this in a recent video? I like the wax that's in the pot from the same brand. It's amazing, but this is actually so much less of a faff because you don't need to find yourself a brush and a little sort of spoolie thing to apply it with. This, you just baste it on with the flat of the brush, flat side, and then just comb the gel through. Now, when I say that this does not move, it is absolutely like super glue. What I do sometimes find with this though, and I'm not sure whether it's happened today, it'd be annoying if it has, because I'll have to redo everything. What I find is that if you've got any product in your eyebrows, like eye serum or leftovers of moisturiser or what have you, this seems to mix with it and turn it into this whole claggy mess, which I don't really get with any other brow products. And then you have to sort of start again, which is a bit annoying. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens maybe a quarter of the time. So I have to make sure that I remember to clean my eyebrows or make sure that the eyebrows are completely clean before I start. That's the only thing that I would say about this. Because I, I did see a few reviews of people saying it gave them eyebrow dandruff. And I've realised that's what it is. It's because it's whatever is already on your eyebrows. Because when they're perfectly clean, I don't get it. I'm just going to pop a little bit more, a little bit of eyeshadow underneath my lower lash line. Because I feel a bit incomplete. Oh my god. Do you know what? This is my favourite palette. Apart from the NARS Voyager palette, which is brilliant, which you can still get. This is my favourite palette. It's an old Becca one. Obviously Becca doesn't exist anymore, I don't think, unless they've come back without me knowing. And this was just a, a palette of, of nudes. Um that are completely matte and it's so useful. I tell you what, whenever I do my eyes with this palette, I just felt like a bit of a sheen today because it's springtime. But whenever I do my eyes with this palette, everyone says, what have you got on your eyes? Or what have you done to your eyes? Because you can contour them and shape them really beautifully and it doesn't really look like you've got any product on. It's very 90s supermodel style makeup product. So look, I'm just taking that underneath. I'm joining it up with my little bit of Vive stick that I put on. And in with the standard, the L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. I've been testing brown mascaras recently to see if I can find a better one than the Clarins Supra Mascara in brown. And I can't, spoiler alert. Um, lots of people said the Maybelline Sky High don't like it and actually really makes my eyes itch for some reason. Lots of people said the Charlotte Tilbury, I think it's called Pillow Talk mascara, which made me look like I had some kind of infection. And then I just bought a few random ones from Amazon that were cheap as chips and <laughs> just so bad. I think this mascara might have dried up. Yeah, there's nothing on the wand there. I was wondering why that looked a bit rubbish. Don't worry, I have more. This is what happens with me and um, Lash Telescopic, or whatever it's called, Telescopic Lash. I, oh, I go to London or wherever and I forget my mascara. I think that one might have dried up as well. And then um, 
why is just nothing coming off these ones? <laughs> and then I end up buying another one and then I forget which one has got anything in it. So I think I need to just start again, buy a new one, start again, and only use that one until it's done. Because it's got a bit out of hand really. Bit like the Lancome foundation. I can't find a mascara to beat this one because I have really fine lashes and I also don't like getting makeup all over my eyelids, which I just did, so that's ironic. Because of that, I really like the thin wand of this. This one's not looking too clever either, to be quite honest. Um, what else do I like about this? Lots of mascaras make my eyes itch. This one doesn't. Um, and you know, in terms of the effect of it, it's it's not sort of groundbreaking in that it gives the biggest lashes that you've ever seen, but it just adds a bit of length, a bit of volume, and keeps them really separated, and I just like that. I like it so much. And it's cheap. I mean, I normally wait until it's on offer on Amazon. It's eight quid-ish each time. If they could just make it in brown, my job here would be done. Someone's going to tell me now that they make it in brown. Oh my god! Six ninety nine on Amazon today on a spring deal. One time purchase, quantity two. Buy it now. Good god, we're about 40 minutes in. I'm going to have to edit this one down. Let's finish off with some lips. The usual lip liner and a very neutral lip product routine. Even if I use a lip product, sometimes it's just a balm. I cannot stress to you enough, if you, like me, are over 40 and you're beginning to just want to do little makeup y things that are very easy but make loads of difference, lining your lips with a pencil that is really close to your lip shade just to get the definition back in makes so much difference. And then you don't have to wear lipstick, you can just put a lip balm on, but just doing that just kind of smartens everything up. I've been trying to find a polished looking colour for my lips that's not too far from my own lip shade. And when I put this on, it was so similar to my lip shade that it just felt like I was live retouching my lips because it didn't feel like the colour was changing, just the whole finish and texture of them. Look. Look at that. So nice. I always feel a little bit too done when I put lip colour on. But I feel like I can just about deal with this. Oh, here's another thing, look. Trish McAvoy Instant Eye Lift. Another thing I've been doing. Watch this few dots of that just nicely placed and tap 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 it in on this edge and then what I do is I extend it up like that. Did you see that happen? <laughs> Did it do anything? I feel like by going like that look it it just gives a little swoosh to the eye that fakes this little eye lift. Am I just convincing myself of that? Or has that worked? See how everything's gone woo like that? I mean, I suppose you could just do it with concealer, normal concealer. But something about this product that lends itself to going onto the skin like that. Am I actually mad? Am I just talking to myself on this one? Or do you think that that's done something? I think it's done something. And I shall live in my own little world of self-affirmation on that. Well, okay, that's what's in my springtime makeup bag. I might go off, do the hair video that I'm about to do, and then finish this video off. Ta-da! hair makeover. I have just filmed a review of two different straighteners. It's going to go up on my Instagram channel, but not yet, and it will also be on my blog. So make sure you're subscribed to my blog and you will get all of the posts straight to your inbox without ever having to check. 
So it's a good one if you want to keep up with me when I'm not on YouTube, um, which is quite a lot of the time really, isn't it? So, any questions or comments about the makeup bag stuff, pop them down below. And there were also links to all of the products, a little bit more information, and a link to sign up to my blog so that you don't miss any of the posts. I think that's it. I think that's all I need to say. I shall see you in the next video.